it's great to, uh, nice to, to finally here. meet each other and, and yep. have you in the studio. Uh, welcome viewers, uh, glad that you guys are here too. And we have a special guest uh, this morning. This is uh, Michael from Earthquake Sim. If you haven't seen his channel yet, definitely go check it out after this. Uh, well, uh, introduce yourself and give us a little bit yeah. of a spiel about your channel. <laughs> uh, I'm Michael and I'm the creator of this uh, Earthquake channel. I, I'm basically uh, uh, focusing on creating 3D simulations, earthquake simulations of uh, various structures. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm so excited to, to be here and meet both of you. I would like to uh, say thanks for uh, this opportunity. Yeah, this channel, I was basically... I've been interested in earthquakes for my whole life. And up until about uh, six or seven months ago, I discovered that I can actually create uh, my own earthquake simulations. I can fully customize them uh, the way I want them. And uh, I yeah, was... we were talking about it, how precise you can customize, you know, if it is brick or concrete or stone and nails and glue right. or, or whatever the way or the structure is. Screwed yeah. steel yeah, or yeah, yeah. Uns... yeah, so I found about the California Seismograph uh, YouTube channel basically when the Ridgecrest uh, earthquake happened three years ago now. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Time is flying. Yeah. So I was. So I've been always, you know, into uh, seeing live seismograms and honestly, their channel is the only channel that I've found in the whole world that would do such a thing, you know, like uh, provide a live stream of a seismograph. California seismograph, you're talking California about. California seismograph, right, right, yeah. yes. <laughs> and I can tell you that day when I when I discovered that I could see what is actually happening with the ground in, in Southern California uh, during this earthquake sequence, I was, I couldn't sleep at night. I was just with my eyes fixed on the screen and see uh, if there's anything coming. The idea that I could be seeing that coming live on stream was um, very interesting mm. to me. You know? and, and that's what our both cha our channels, uh, I think that's yeah. what we have in common. Your channel focuses on uh, also understanding what a quake can cause, you know, the, right. the potential uh, breakdown of houses, buildings, bridges, you name it. And you show that in Earthback Sim really well and just uh, focusing on uh, on understanding it and preparation and that's very you know that's right. what we're focusing on a while back we started uh, putting more personalized uh, side together which uh, means that we updated our list which Dean worked on really hard the list was really a lot of work we spent uh, months yeah, and months that took a while. yeah uh, First, we were, we were getting the information off of the USGS. The USGS, yeah. USGS. yeah. But the problem with that was is that it wasn't updating as much as we uh, hoped to. So yeah, I had to find the information to then put it into Google Sheets. That's where we're using it all. So I ended up eventually finding a uh, file that had all the information of the earthquakes, but it's kind of like a bit scrambled. <laughs> so you have to mm -hmm. kind of like, this is the information that I want to only see it's the magnitude, the depth, the location, the time, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of other information that they include in the, in the file. Fortunately for us, this is publicly available too. The information that they have, they updated every minute. All I had to do is take that file and uh, ask to request that every minute from their site that way on uh, Google Sheet it updates every minute for right. us. Right and one of the problems that we had is that if the requests were too many it would yeah, kick it us off the... Would, yeah, yeah so there's only a certain amount of requests that you can ask and that was another challenge was that we would be asking it too many times at once. And there were a lot of that type of challenges it was not just yeah, that. Yeah it wasn't just I mean, that there was yeah. some other ones too. But one know. of the other things that happened um, as we were working on that is that we realized we wanted to have a better map you know you've been working right, on that map we're working yeah. on that map yeah first was getting that list done fortunate because Google Sheets has this uh, cool thing which was app script which allows you to write your own script this wouldn't be possible if Google didn't let us do this yeah. <laughs> which right, is pretty right. crazy that they let you do this so literally on Google Sheets you can code which is really cool but with the map we are using another we're using Python to make that work and they have this uh, cool thing uh, called Folium, which uses HTML scripts on uh, your web browser, but we didn't want it to be on the web browser. We wanted it to be its own program. So I had to figure out how to 
get that to work on its separate window, so you don't need to, a browser to copy the to link. To open oh. up, right. right, right. Yeah, yeah, that, it's, it's really cool. So the map right now in uh, on our live site is not yet not, there. No, it's not. No, but there. we're, we're getting there. And that's, yeah. So this is the future uh, for California Science and Graph. Uh, we're always looking to upgrade and update, of course, but also in a way that we give the opportunity for others to uh, maybe learn their ways. To, you know, if somebody is interested and busy with this type of things, mm -hmm. and I like to start making more videos also in regards of that to explain things uh, you know what our challenges were and how to go from that point to success you know making something work so that brings me to uh, one of the other projects the, the the newest project we have the G7 meter which is uh, now you have seen the G7 meter for example you're in Chicago right and so the G7 meter has a you have a different view than Southern California people have tell me a little bit when you saw that but what were you thinking about that meter? Yeah, it, it was pretty interesting because I could, first of all, I had no idea what, what it was, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking into it, I, I realized that what you guys are doing is, is pretty smart, like getting all this mm -hmm. feedback from all uh, all sorts of sources in real time, like across California. And obviously uh, that's not, I guess, as doable in like the area I live and not mm -hmm. to mention, it's not very uh, yeah. seismically active. Yeah. I think uh, the, the G7 thing was a, a, a major step in your achievements to uh, to add it on your... Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah there's training. a lot of question about this. For, uh, for example, right. a lot of people have uh, made comments and said, you know, a prediction meter, but that's absolutely not what this right. is. It right. doesn't predict an earthquake at any time. And this is something I would like to uh, kind of more explain, and maybe we don't do that all in this video. Uh, the G7 meter, it was created to just reflect of all the different information, the data that is available publicly, most of that, and have that implemented within our own uh, readings and data that we have from our seismographs, and then give a reflection of that area, what is happening and in real time. And that's what is interesting because now people, for example, you in Chicago can go there and that gates, that these seven gates doesn't mean anything maybe for you when you see uh, places come about that they're saying like Juno you know, Valley or whatever name comes up. But when you see a place like in Missouri, like St. Louis, and you see that going up, from why is this going up? Right. You know, that's closer to you and say, hey, there is something happening there. And that that's could, different than how it was a day ago a, yeah, or two right. days ago. So. And that would then potentially have an influence also on Chicago, it being the, the New Madrid Fault there. When you look at this gates, you remember, and, and that's why we made this gates, it needed to be something that is very flexible with all the data as, as an input, but very simple to understand that it is just one scale one needle and one place that you pick out. You're gonna remember that place and the scale where the meter shows if it was green yesterday and now today it's yellow or orange or maybe even red. And that is what we're trying to create, a very simple instrument where people can daily see what is the status of the nearest fault or the nearest place to me that could impact my living space. And that was a, it's a difficult project. I mean, we are far from done with it. This is a new, we have just started it. There is a lot to be implemented. But anyway, these are the challenges that we have and that we work on. It's going to be a, a lot of work and a lot of months ahead of us that we'll be busy with this, but it will be uh, very uh, interesting to see then eventually over the months and the years, the actual result. So not as a prediction, Gates, but it is a maybe foreboat on what potentially an area that has a flare up and then obviously potentially can have a bigger quake happening right. in that area. And so that's what our G7 Gates is about. Michael, uh, what a pleasure having you here uh, over at the studio uh, this weekend, spending a couple days together. This is fantastic. And enjoy meeting you, uh, enjoy uh, your channel. I wish you the best of luck and uh, we definitely stay in touch. Looking forward to doing uh, creating content together. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Thank you so, so much for having me. Here. Oh.